Good morning. Welcome to another video by Maud in the Netherlands. It is still early in the morning here. The sun is rising and I can see outside my window that it's a little misty. They've promised rain today, but I'm okay with it. I'm just going to craft. And today I'm going to show you how I made these paper lanterns. They go together with my lantern journal, you know, the one you saw in the videos that I made. I've gone ahead and um, done some things to my journal. I've done the front of the watercolor papers. I did some watercoloring, nothing special, just something to frame the nice picture. And I did something to the cover of this journal. These are real leaves and uh, I enjoyed working with them. And I also made a huge masterboard to work with to show you how I made the journal, the, not the journals, <laughs> the lanterns. I made these on pages from my Webster dictionary that I found here in the Netherlands. The paper is really thin and well, I need that because I want to send these lovely lanterns to friends and the post is becoming so expensive, but these lanterns are no more than just a postcard, so I can send them. So, let's start working. So this is my setup this morning. You can see my tripod there with the selfie stick that I've attached. And um, that is where I put my phone in a minute to start filming from above. And, um, well, you see my card here with all the glues and inks and everything that I need. I've already taken down the, the lanterns and laid them flat here. So I can show you in a minute what they can look like when you want to send them off. And here I've got the huge master board that I'm going to uh, cut in a minute. And um, <laughs> let me take you around. You can see that it's autumn outside. All the leaves are in our yard. Oh, this is probably nice also. You see there, junk journal. And these are all my, well, papers that I need. Um, a while ago I made these boxes. And I really love them. They are next to my desk and I've got all my papers in them. Here you see some really beautiful vintage ephemera. I, ca I can't use it yet. Um, these are cards that I made using Distress Oxide. I've got my vintage envelopes here. Oh, sorry. One is folded. I can get it right. Well, I've got a stash of vintage envelopes that I use in my journals. These are the Digitals by Taylor Made Journals. Well, just put them aside for a moment. And um, also in here, I've got, um, well, not, this is miscellaneous, diversen in Dutch. These are um let me see <laughs> scraps mostly from old books and uh some stamps that i did these are blank old pages for stamping and um for all kinds of things these are scrapbook papers scraps um these are french I got them from Bea. Hello, Bea. Um, this is 
an English farmer's book. This is a Dutch book about a tower and there's all kinds of nice handwriting in there. And this is also a Dutch book about um, bicycles and cars. And this is some papers that I still need to fussy cut, but I haven't come around with. And these are my digitals. And um, <clears throat> this is also Dutch and it's really nice because it's all kinds of old drawings and uh, handwriting. And this is children's books. Really nice books. That's all in here. And here I've got a stack of handmade papers that I bought on, in Tessel, an island here in the Netherlands. Um, and I've got all kinds of little things here. Um, this is a Michelin guide. Sorry. <coughs> A Michelin guide but it's it's a fake it's a remake but the papers are really nice some inked papers glue books you know from the books that I this is from my latest book and um, well tea dyed and these are also uh, this is vellum that I inked and lots of other things that I can use in my journals. And down here I've got my cardstock. My regular brown and blue and green, all kinds of colors. And uh, <laughs> there's a carton here of buttermilk that I want to turn into a lantern. And there I've got all my stamps and my dies and I've got my dies already on my slanted desk. Let me zoom you out. There is my die cut machine and there are my two books with dies. Let me take... This is the big book with the dies. This is a photo album and um, my dear friend Aloha Hello, sweetie. <laughs> she found a lot of these photo albums and I told her already um, you can use them perfectly if you glue magnetic sheets in them. And um, this is what you get. You, you can store your dies and um, well, for me, this works perfectly. I store most of my big dies in here. This is a difficult one. <laughs> it doesn't want to stick, but it's a beautiful one. I'm, I'm really happy that I've got this one. I use it a lot. So these are my bigger dies. And then I've also got this one. This one is really big and heavy because I've got a lot of magnetic sheets in here. Um, my Tim Holtz dies, all kinds of dies. I love to have them like this. I showed you this one earlier in a video. So these are my dies, my die cutting machine and it's all around me and I love working like this. I can, uh, my chair, my thrifted chair is on wheels. So I can uh, go everywhere sitting down. <laughs> I am lazy. Um, I've got my computer there and probably uh, when I'm not, well, I would love to, to, to see some more uh, YouTube videos when I'm crafting on my own. That's what I do. I, I, <laughs> I am joined by other crafters to, um, uh, with their YouTube videos, but <clears throat> I'm going to have a little drink and then I'm going to uh, well, I'm going to cut this masterboard and into um, well pieces that are able to uh, oh sorry I, I'm lost for words again um, I will probably use my dies and uh, cut some some pieces out of this masterboard so I can make a lantern
I can show you. So I've got my paper lanterns laid out for you and also uh, the shapes that I did. I want to be starting with these ones. Um, a lot of you commented on Instagram that you really liked this bird one. Well, these are fussy cut images that I have in my stash. I have fussy cut it um, quite some things. I love to do that in the evening when the TV is not very interesting to me. And I also used some of the Tim Holtz dies just that I did with uh, an old book. But what this is, this lantern and also this one, is just a square of paper. I've cut this out of my big master board that I showed you. It's just one piece, a square, and what I did, well, you could obviously just cut these out with a ruler, but I have these dies that I really like and they give a scalloped edge. So I've cut these out and um, used a bigger die to cut the vellum and this way if I glue it on like this on the back it will be just a little bit bigger but it will be beautiful and it won't add too much to the weight because well this is really lightweight and I want to keep it lightweight so I can send it if I like. Um, these are made with um, scrapbook papers and I, I took one side out because I wanted one side in my journal and I, well, I played around with my Tombos on vellum making this. You can see that I, I drew clouds and over that I have stamped and embossed these stamps, these snowflake stamps that Michelle from Michelle's Kaartjes Hello Michelle, <laughs> she is a Dutch friend of mine who lives nearby and she said well if you want stamps of snowflakes I can lend you some so that was beautiful, thank you again Michelle. And this is a die that I have and it, it's lovely and it, it I love this one, it, it looks like a crown now but I'm not going to use this many times because it is <sighs> It is a lot of work to get all the little bits out. If one of you has a tip how to do these ones and um, get it to be more easy, then please comment down below. On this paper, um, well, obviously I wanted a piece in my journal, <laughs> but also I thought, well, this is nice because now I can write something on the back. I can send this like this, like a card. And when somebody opens it, I can write a, a little note here. And then they can just fold it like this and have a paper lantern. I put a little light inside. I have electrical lights in here. Uh, stores, cheap stores like Action, Blocker, and I, I bet something like the Dollar Tree or whatever cheap store you have. They sell these electric lights with batteries and, um, well, they're perfect for these paper lanterns. This is also, I also glued the birds on here in a way that um, I can fold this up and send it if I like. And with this one, I'll probably just stick a note in here to say hello to my friend, to whomever is going to get this. So these are the box, yeah, I call them uh, boxes. <laughs> I also had these um, tags, they were connected and I did not cut them loose and I just played around with it. Um, they're not really special but um, this is really fast and, and 
easy to make also. And now on to these. These are made with dies that I have. Um, these dies. And also, well, this is a, a little bit of a different shape. Um, I use three sizes of this die. I cut the, the papers like this. Not four at a time, <laughs> just one at a time. And then I use this one, that is a bit bigger than that one, to cut the, the vellum. Well, this is not vellum, this is rice paper. Or, um, yeah, just, just uh, wrapping paper. I'm not exactly sure what the word is. But I used a slightly bigger die than the one that I uh, used to cut the hole in the lantern. And this way I can cover the back. And also if you look inside the, the lantern, it still looks nice. This one I've used a lot bigger uh, middle. And what I do with these to connect them is just cut a strip of paper. <laughs> and now I don't have any paper here. Um, like this. I glue it and then I just like washi, but this is stronger probably because I'm using a Brit stick and I will connect these on the back, but I'll probably get uh, another sheet from this dictionary. So when you look inside the, uh, the lantern, it looks perfectly fine and, and wonderful. Um, well, let me take you along in assembling these lanterns. And I'm going to clear up a bit and then we're first going to assemble this one with the coffee dyed vellum. And for this one, I'm, I want to use mushrooms because well, here in, in the Netherlands, it's still autumn. And I think I like a lantern with a lot of mushrooms on it. So let me just clear up a bit and I'll be back. So I've also inked up all the edges. I've got my fussy cut here. Um, and now I will glue these in. For this I'm going to use my collal glue again that I have in this really small bottle. And <laughs> I saw Barbara struggle the other day with gluing down vellum. And <laughs> hi, sweetie. <laughs> I told you I was going to um, show you an easier way. Um, never glue, never put glue on the vellum because it will start to warp right away. A better method. Um, I found this out because I was also struggling with uh, the vellum is I put a really tiny bead of glue where I want the vellum just a small amount and I will let this dry for a bit and I will start gluing this one already the same thing just a little bead and this way um, I'm giving the glue just a little time to dry a little bit um, how long well just about gluing three of these squares re rectangles and then I will be starting gluing on the first piece of vellum And if it warps, you'll say, oh, nice, Maud, 
uh, that is not helpful but I will do this fourth also because I'm rather quick at doing this gluing but I did this with the other lanterns and it seemed to work perfectly because then the glue had dried a little bit and it is sticky enough still and the vellum just sticks perfectly to the glue without warping. Get my bone folder. The other one down. So this glue is acetone based. Maybe that is also what helps in preventing the warping. So, in this way, your vellum won't behave like a diva that doesn't want to stick down. I think this works perfectly. And because I used a really small amount, there's no glue seeping out anywhere. So I can now turn it around and start embellishing. And... Well, this is just like making a collage in your junk journal, really. This is like collaging and I love it. I can just lay them down like this and I am already like what I'm seeing. <laughs> I'm really lucky because I thought this one was going to be too big, but it isn't. And I also want some, like the birds, I want some of the mushrooms sticking out. I've got a little leaf here, sorry, excuse me. This one is too big. Perhaps this one. Yeah, I'm liking this one better than the darker one. I've got these small mushrooms. got this one it might be better here mm. this one there and this one here and I've got these little leaves that I used in my journal and um, well I'm going to scatter them around because here in the Netherlands well the leaves are falling, but the trees are still this beautiful golden color and red colors and, and all kinds of lovely colors. It has been rather windy last week, so a lot of leaves came down already. But this afternoon I'm going to take my dog to the forest again and enjoy all the leaves and all the beauty. I will probably ink these leaves up a bit because, well, I don't like them this plain color. But, um, do you want to see me do all this or do you want me to speed this up and uh, be back when I'm finished with this little job? 
perhaps you do like it when you see me laying these down. <laughs> I'm not sure because I can't hear you, but a lot of times I really like to watch people do this and um, hear their thought process of why they are putting this one here and that one there. Well, this, this start is just me throwing some things, just throwing them down. And later on, I will think about if I like where it's going. But I'm already liking it. So this is what I would normally do in my journal, except for the, the vellum part. But then I would do a, a collage and then throw these things on. Perhaps... Perhaps, 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 oh, this one is attached. Hmm. Because I'm liking this number three. I'm listening to my friend Barbara saying three is always a really good number. <laughs> She's right. Three is a really good number. And this leaf is still attached to the hmm. Now I'm really quiet, but um, yeah, I'm liking this and I will ink everything up and glue everything down and then I'll show you the the result and we'll, I will show you also, because I made strips of the dictionary, I will show you also how I close this, this lantern. Um, that's it. I'll, uh, <laughs> I am going to do this and I'll be back. <laughs> so, um, I thought I, I would take you along a little further. I have not inked everything up yet because I want to, sh uh, to tell you a little bit of my thought process of why I'm making these lanterns. Today is November 11th and that is St. Martin. Uh, St. Martin's Day. It is a popular feast in many parts of the Netherlands and in Northern Europe. It's typically in the early winter evening of November 11 that small groups of children can be heard going around and down the streets singing songs and reciting poems. I'm reading this to you because I'm I've uh, googled it because I wanted to make sure that um, I had the right information about this day. It is celebrated here in my village. Um, these children carry around lanterns and as a reward for their singing they are given sweet treats. Um, it's a custom similar to the American Halloween but it's non-commercial and the children make their lanterns in school. So I want to take you along a little further and um, in the meantime I will be inking up my mushrooms. So St. Martin's Day is an old harvest festival and it is celebrated in many European countries and it precedes the fastening period of Advent that starts um, November 12th and it's named after St. Martin, St. Martin of Tours, a revered European saint who was known to, for his kindness to strangers and because he gave away many many things. Uh, traditionally in this region the children's lanterns were not made out of paper 
but made out of hollowed turnips or sweet sugar beets and they would dangle them on a string on a stick. But these days the children make their lanterns out of paper. And that is also why I have the, the buttermilk cardboard. <laughs> this one. Because you can uh, punch a hole in here and um, make um, yeah, holes in here. And then if you dangle this on a stick, it is, it is perfect. Um, when I was a little child, we did not have the uh, battery small little uh, lights we used to <laughs> just use candles and that is why a um, a milk carton like that came in really handy when they started to to make those milk cartons because well they do not burn that easily <laughs> paper obviously does um i'm going to tell you a little more about saint martin um, what probably started as a custom that allowed impoverished children to beg because, well, um, the difficult time of year is starting where there's not much food around anymore. Um, but, um, yeah, luckily for us, um, there are still poor children in the Netherlands. Uh, there are. But luckily we have different ways of feeding them. And um, well, St. Martin is no longer um, for them to, to, to collect food for winter time. Luckily it's now just a, a feast and, and they can get candy. I mean, <laughs> when I was young, they also gave fruit to us. And um, well, by the time we knew what doors that were handing out you these little mandarins or oranges, we would not go there anymore. <laughs> we would just go to the places where they had the sweets. Ah, children, eh? <laughs> um, in my village, we place lanterns outside, and I'm hoping it will be dry tonight, because then I can put my paper lanterns outside. And that is also a way for the children to know, well, I can get food, I can get um, some treats, treats there. So, um, most of it, it's packed chocolate because, well, especially now with COVID, we want everything packed, of course. And um, there is another reason why I wanted to make lanterns. Because a couple of weeks ago, I got a letter from a very dear but elderly friend. And I could see by her handwriting that she was not doing well. And she will never, ever let me know that she's not doing well. But I can always tell by her handwriting. And I know, um, well, she's in her mid-70s. And, um, well, she has had problems with her lungs. So she is really lonely at the moment. And... Um, She's had hard times before, uh, feeling lonely. Her sister died two years ago, and that made her even more lonely. And I wanted to do something for her. I, I can't travel to her because of COVID. I, and also, it is a three hours drive. I'm, I'm not very... Um, yeah, I, I am... I love driving, but three hours to visit her and three hours back. And, you know, we, we cannot really meet because all the... Yeah, I, I, I don't want to go to her house. I would be terrified to, to give her COVID because I, I go into stores. I need to buy my groceries. But I wanted to do something for her. And then I thought, well, I want to send her some light because well that is the only thing i can think of and together with a long long letter and trying to let her know that i'm thinking about her and uh, sending her some love basically and that's when i thought well 
There are more people like this. There are also people here in my village. There's a man across the canal who is still waiting for his family. His wife is um, from Russia and um, they had decided that uh, she and her daughters were going to live in the Netherlands with him. And um, well, just before they decided to come here and put the children inside schools here, COVID broke out and the region where they are living, um, they're not allowed to get out. So he is waiting for his wife and his children. And I know that he is, oh, he's fed up with COVID and, and well, but he wants his, his daughters and his wife to be safe, of course. And I want to give him a lantern as well with a note saying, I'm thinking about you and I'm, I'm truly hoping that your wife and children can come to join you soon. And also there are elderly people here in the village that, um, well, when I walk my dog, I, I talk to them and, and we meet up walking our dogs. But they tell me also that they re really feel alone because, well, normally the children would, would, would come and um, have a coffee and everything, but that is not allowed at the moment. And also the children are telling them, look, our children are going to school, we are doing grocery shopping so they don't want to give their parents COVID and that is what we do at the moment we stay at home and um, well there are some other paper crafters here in the village so I will be sending them uh, some papers and um, also I'll write down what I did and I'm hoping they will join me and that we can um, give oh <laughs> give uh, some lanterns to to people and and i'm hoping that you will join me too in making these paper lanterns and um, make them as light as possible and therefore they cannot be much bigger than this because otherwise they will they will not be sturdy enough um but let's make lanterns for people who who need our attention who need a little love and um send these out and you know, everybody can get uh, some of these small electrical lights. I will get one. You know, these ones, they're probably available all everywhere. Um, and they go perfectly inside these lanterns. And if you don't want to use the electrical ones, then use a... A jar this is an old jam jar and put um, a little candle inside this before you <laughs> uh, put the paper lantern on top <sighs> so but this is my story of why I'm making these paper lanterns and I want to continue making these pa paper lanterns um, I want to try to make one every day until winter solstice, uh, when the light is returning back to the to the northern hemisphere, um, and I'm going to journal about it too. I've already put one of the lantern parts inside my journal to keep, and um, I'll probably glue some uh, paper that I can journal on here. Um, yeah, that was me rambling <laughs> about why I'm making these paper lanterns. And, um, well, I'm hoping you will join me because, well, this is something different than, than junk journaling. And I will go back to junk journaling, but this is me combining the junk journaling with the lantern making, <laughs> I'm hoping. So I'm going to glue these down. And uh, then I'll show you the end result and then I will also take you along in how I assembled this one. Sorry about the shaking. Um, so this is what I thought of 
doing for this lantern. Uh, nothing is attached yet. I'm thinking I'm showing you first, putting all these things aside, how I will glue these together and then um, glue these on the back like we did with the big lantern. Um, let me see, do I want a specific order? This is fine. I don't want to be fussy about the order that they should be in because, well, I like uh, to surprise <laughs> myself and, uh, well, normally if I think about it too much about the order, then it's just going to be a little bit, hmm, how do you call that in English? So I cut strips from the dictionary to use to put these together and I'm just going to use my ruler to tear them into workable strips. <laughs> if I'm really lucky then yep this fits right away and I need four strips to glue them all together but the last one we will wait with until the whole thing is embellished. Yeah, this is perfect. So this is the inside of the of the lantern, and I quite like that it is um, just a dictionary paper and that also gives me the feeling of junk journaly yeah junk journaly what <laughs> um yeah i like it that this is the inside because you can also look inside the lantern uh now putting these together and gluing this strip on. Obviously you could also use washi to do this but washi never sticks ver very well and I like it that if I glue this in then if I look inside the lantern it just looks like it's one piece and it's a little bit too long so I'm going to get my scissors out and just Cut this part off so this has to be a little smaller for the next one so this is not really difficult I mean I don't think that it, that this is really difficult <laughs> putting my glue down obviously is difficult for me So now this was a little bit too short, just using this tiny piece to glue the top part together and now this one, let me see if I measured this one right, yep, I hope I did. I like that this page, uh, this paper is already aged a little bit and it is thin like newspaper. Um, let me know in the comments down below if you, if you would like me to make a video about the books that I use for journaling and for lantern making obviously. Because I've got a lot of books that I, um, well, I hoarded. <laughs> I found them in thrift stores and uh, maybe you you would like to see what kind of books that I use for journaling and for lantern making and everything. If that's something you would like to see then let me know. And now I will do the same 
as I did with the big lantern, just putting glue around the edge here, just a small bead of glue because really, well, this paper is so flimsy that I'm going to put inside that it does not need a lot of glue. It will stick really easily, but the glue needs to be dry just a little bit before I put it on because otherwise also this paper is going to warp quite dramatically and you won't get it to stick down. Ah, the next lantern that I'm going to make, I'm trying to do this one this week, I am going to try to um, adhere or how do you call that? I'm going to use a napkin and gluing that on vellum and probably that would also be really nice as a backdrop as a window inside a journal that is going to be my next project I think there is a smooth side on this paper and a more rough side and I want a smooth side out on the outside of the lantern I think I found this per this method to, to be perfect, just gluing it all and then sticking these things on because then the glue has dried a bit and there's no problem with warping and it still is sticky enough. The only thing you don't get um, a lot of time to adjust the paper if you are not sticking it on right away in the right way because it has dried already and um, you don't get any time to do things differently. <laughs> this is looking nice, but let's turn it around. It's looking even nicer. And I spilled some ink on there, of, of course I did, but it doesn't matter because now I can see where I want these little fairies to go. I've also inked the fairies and there's a little white thingy on there that I'm not liking. Oh. Oh, I did not ink this one and there's a big difference between inking these and not inking these I like them inked so this is also a dye that I have and I love these fairies I have used them inside my journals many times and now I can use them on the lanterns I like them like this, so I'm going to glue them on and do exactly the same thing. Start gluing on this side and not putting them down straight away, just waiting. Mm. Well, this might take a minute to glue because I want a tiny bit of glue also on the wings and the paper that I used for fussy cutting these uh, fussy cutting for using my dye on is um, I made these 
I used um, Distress Oxide to make these cardboard papers. I, on the back I wrote the, the names of the, of the oxides that I used. Um, I don't use these straight away, I copy them onto photo paper and that way you get these shiny images. I like them and um, and that way I'm keeping these and um, yeah I can use these over and over again and I find that um, using my dye on on well I can glue this one now using my dye on the photo paper really works fine Now that the glue has dried a bit, it does not warp the, the packaging paper. Rice paper. This looks like rice paper. It's really thin. I'm going to glue down all these images and I'll be back to, to close the, the lanterns. So I've glued all the images on. So this one is more plain than this one but I like them both and especially when you put the lights behind them they they are beautiful so now let's let me see uh, let me show you how I will be closing this I will so I folded all the parts again Obviously, this is still really flimsy, but if I put it up, it stays up perfectly. I've uh, folded these in so they close up here in the middle. And this is where I'm going to attach this strip. It's the same strip that I used on, on the insides. Just using some glue stick. Put enough glue on this. Glue it on this side. Opening it up. Closing it and letting this dry for a minute and I'll be doing the same with this one. I'm going to um, glue a little piece of a little strip of paper over it because this is tearing and I don't want that to rip so using the same paper that I used to to ah oh, <laughs> to make this allows me to also restore the things that are broken or tearing or And I'm going to do the same thing with this one, closing it like this. And now I can get a strip that is long enough. Oh, excuse me, my dog sees something that she doesn't like. I'm hoping she will stop. No, she won't. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I have to... So, <laughs> I stopped my dog barking. She's in here with me now in my craft room. Um, she won't bark if she's together with me, but if she's in our living room and sees somebody coming too close to the house, well, she will let them know that they're not welcome. But let me put some glue 
on this strip I want enough glue on there because well this is going to hold the whole lantern together Gluing one side and gluing the other side. So this is not really difficult. And now the lanterns are... Well, I'm going to let this dry for a minute. But this lantern now has its shape. It's square shape. Put the light in there. <laughs> and if I want to send it, well, I can just fold it and send it in an envelope, in a card or whatever, or put a note in, in here. So it is rather flimsy. It is really thin paper, so it, it does not weigh much if I want to send it, but if I if I put it like this, it, it is perfectly staying in place. And I think this is dry now also. Dry enough for me to make a fold here where I glued the pieces together. And this was made of a long strip, so the other sides are quite sturdy. But this side is a little fragile at the moment because the glue is still drying. But I can put it upright over a lantern. I will make a photograph tonight with um, the lights behind the lantern so you can see what the light does. I don't know if the camera picks it up, but it is beautiful when I put the light behind it. Um, well, this was it for now. Um, I hope you enjoyed me making lanterns and I'm hoping that you will give them a try also because they're really easy and if you got some papers lying around, some fussy cutting um, dies, you can use whatever you have and um, I'm hoping you will give it a go too. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.